Welcome to the Sweaty Pillow. I've been so excited to get this particular powerhouse woman on our podcast. Uh, such a trailblazer in the space of um, helping menopausal women with very science-infused innovation. We have Elizabeth with us. Uh, Elizabeth is the CEO of Ember Wave. Um, been high-powered, C-level, uh, huge career, 20-plus years, but a serial startup-type CEO growth strategist of now two, three, or four startup trailblazing um, innovative companies. So welcome, Elizabeth. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Tell us about ember wave before we get into the conversation which is going to be centered around innovation and menopause but right off the hop let's talk about the incredible device that your company puts out into the world yeah so we produce this beautiful wearable device it's for men and women actually um, but what we find is that it's really appealed to women in menopause um, because it's able to really mitigate hot flashes even stop them in their tracks help with sleep and stress and anxiety. And what the device does is actually deliver a temperature sensation to the inside of the wrist, either heating or cooling. And what we've learned is that temperature is a unique neural pathway to the brain. And so it tells the brain to calm down and can prevent that hot flash from happening. And um, we have a lot of misunderstandings about hot flashes and how they work. So most people think it's a temperature problem because it sure shows up that way. You feel hot and sweaty and uncomfortable, but it's actually an overactivation of your sympathetic nervous system, which is the same thing as your fight or flight response. Hmm. And so I always tell men that they've had hot flashes too, if they just think about the last time that maybe they were spooked or had a near miss accident on their bike or in their car, they have felt that rush of adrenaline and the overheating in your torso and the sweating. And that's exactly what women are going through. It's incredible the work uh, and the R&D that was put into the, the device. Tell us a bit more about that because, you know, part of our work um, at our company is being a bit of a watchdog on brands that are making claims that are false or science theater, not having the substantiation behind. And you guys mm -hmm. are, really at the forefront of, of all of this R&D that's gone into the Ember Wave. Yes, certainly. So the Ember Wave was actually, the technology was discovered when our founders, two uh, young men at MIT, were in an over-air conditioned laboratory in the middle of summer. And they found the lab so cold, they had to put down jackets on. And you can imagine it's 95 degrees mm. inside and you're inside wearing a down jacket. Something seemed off to them about that dynamic. And so they went to work to understand how to actuate human comfort, thermal comfort um, by hacking the body itself. And that started by really understanding the physiology of temperature and how humans process temperature. And they did a deep dive into the scientific literature and came across a seminal paper written by two scientists at UCSF who looked at the properties of thermoreceptors, which are these unique nerve endings that we have all over our body distributed, and how they behave differently from other nerve endings. So for example, if I pick up a cold glass of water like this, one part of my brain and certain nerve endings are processing the, the weight and the form factor, but there's a whole separate network that's processing temperature. Mm -hmm. And it's very fast because it's in every species. So it's been honed over time through evolution to be very effective. Mm -hmm. so when they studied the physiology of temperature and they looked at this paper by these two scientists, what they learned is those thermoreceptors work when the temperature is changing small changes in the temperature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why we developed waveforms when the temperature is actually delivered through waveforms and not static temperature. Mm -hmm. If you apply static temperature, you adapt. 
And we all know this from moments where we walk into a cold body of water and it feels very cold in the beginning, but after 10 minutes, you're perfectly adapted. So right. we designed everything, everything about this product is designed around the physiology of this thermoreceptor. And then in 2021, the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology was awarded to those scientists because of their breakthrough research. And so we now can say that this technology was designed around what is now Nobel, Nobel winning science. So that's really um, a feather in the cap of the founders that mm -hmm. went to work to really understand what was happening. Since then, we've made sure that we validated the technology uh, in clinical studies. So although we're a consumer company, we work with leading academic institutions and those, those researchers to be sure that when we make a claim about hot flashes or sleep um, or other conditions, um, they can be backed up. So important. And hopefully you're getting recognized and your company's getting recognized um, for that, that great body of multiple bodies of work that you guys do. Oh, thank you. Um, when we look up the top eight, 10, I hear now there's up to 70 symptoms women have to deal with in perimenopause and menopause in the top five to 10, typically in our research, you'll see hot flashes, night sweats, sleep disruption right around the top. Um, and that is, you know, there's been, of course, a plethora of drugs to help women sleep. And then most don't want that. And it can't be a long term solution. Um, you know, there's assorted natural supplements that are aimed at helping hot flashes or night sweats. In the world of menopause symptoms, as it relates to innovation, trying to help women, what are you seeing and hearing um, in your network on innovation to support these really prevailing symptoms? Well, of course, I'd throw our hat in the ring there because hot flashes are, it's, it's the most prevalent symptom that, that women feel. Mm -hmm. I think what would be more helpful to women in menopause is to understand that these symptoms are like a flywheel effect. Mm -hmm. So, if you're not sleeping well, and I'm not talking about night sweats here, I'm just talking about insomnia or not being able to get back to sleep, your cortisol levels go up. If your cortisol levels go up because you're not getting proper sleep, that's going to, again, uh, instigate that fight or flight response, which causes more hot flashes, more hot flashes causes more stress, more stress causes more insomnia. <laughs> right? So what we like to say is you have to break the cycle. It's like a pain cycle. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think those anxiety, sleep, and hot flashes, we have to tackle first. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is there's a lot more innovation going on now in things like osteoporosis and bone health. Okay. Um, that's a, another underserved area. Women don't have a lot of options there. Mm -hmm. Also with uh, urinary incontinence, mm. instead of just you know slapping on um, a pad, there are now ways to stimulate your pelvic floor uh, and strengthen that. And so what I'm really encouraged by, and, and the, the osteoporosis um, or osteopenia example is what Bone Health Technologies is working on, okay. which is also a device. So hmm. it's nice to see these breakthrough devices um, that allow women to use what I call their own pharmacy. So instead mm -hmm. of relying on pills and medications, how do we harness what we already have? That's essentially what our product is doing is it's stimulating a, a counter response. And in many cases with the pelvic floor stimulation for urinary incontinence and, and the bone technology, that's also using your body's own repair mechanisms. Right so fascinating and i'm so encouraged by what you said and i didn't know those things of course and that's why you're here is to help 
women and, and our communities understand what's coming down the, the pipeline. Um, I just found out coincidentally, and this, by the way, we get a little too much information in these these casual conversations. Um, but in a recent uh, round of testing through my doctor, I found out that my bone density is low. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what else could there be? I mean, I've had a whack of symptoms and, it, and primarily the sleep has been my worst one. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, hot flashes and night sweats. And I have your device and it has saved, it has saved me on many occasions. It's my go-to if I don't have it on and I'm hot, I run up to get it in my house. Um, but all of these issues, bone density, the pelvic floor, the cortisol fight or flight, these that cause downstream cardiac issues, these are major women's health and wellness Oh, yeah. As much as as much as under the covers of menopause, these these are big health concerns. Well, it's interesting you bring up your own experience because I recently had shoulder surgery, and I remember when I entered my forties, I got frozen shoulder, and many of my friends, when they hit perimenopause, got frozen shoulder. And I started to do some research and ask my orthopedic surgeon about it, and he kind of just said. Oh yeah, well, we know that it only tends to happen to women in their 40s. When I looked into it, and I don't know if you know what frozen shoulder is, but it, it, it's just like it sounds, from one day to the next, you can't move your shoulder. And I, I did a literature deep dive after that conversation, and it turns out this is probably linked to the sudden change in estrogen. It's prevalent in women in their 40s, but it's been completely overlooked because, you know, it's really unexplainable. They can't take an x-ray of it. They can't diagnose it. It just happens. It self-corrects after time and researchers really haven't looked into it. It's just wild that there is a series of issues that women deal with that when we go to our general practitioner, or you or you'll hear a version of well we don't really know but it just happens to them in the 40s either work out more or do some meditating i mean none of these are medical solutions that give us hope that we're going to have relief well and i you know it's interesting because if maybe somebody just connected the dots a little bit more on this meditation and lifestyle stuff mm -hmm. it might be effective if somebody explained to you the reason you're having hot flashes and night sweats and heart palpitations and anxiety is because your fight or flight response is an overdrive. Hmm. All of those symptoms are linked to that. So let me teach you how to elicit your parasympathetic response. Mm -hmm. Well, that's best achieved through cardi cardio exercise, mm -hmm. meditation, yoga, hmm. proper diet, right? Then it would kind of make sense. It doesn't feel like you're being dismissed. That's, it's a layer deeper that we're too casual and the medical community is too casual or somehow it gets lost because how you just described that to me, that I get your parasympathetic nerve that's at play here. And if you can just work to calm that down, everything could come in line. At least it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. And even I think there are many doctors and OBGYNs that don't know this. They don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. We know it's a decrease in estrogen, but what happens in between? Yeah. That's right. where the work has to happen. Yeah. There's, um, this stat that we came across that by by next year, so 2025, there'll be more than 1 billion women on the planet experiencing the symptoms of menopause. Mm -hmm. And this represents 600 billion of spending opportunity. And it's largely untapped. And another stat in concert with that says that 5% of marketing dollars of businesses that could appeal to women in, in, in having menopausal symptoms are spent on this massive market size. Why is that, do you think? Why are we here? Well, I think first, menopause has been a taboo subject 
for decades, <laughs> millennia. Yeah. Um, I think it's taboo because menopause for women signals an, an end of usefulness socially, mm -hmm. which is fertility. I mean, we have to dig deep on this from an anthropological perspective, right? It's, yes. it makes sense. Um, but people are waking up to this opportunity because it's not only the menopause market and that the fact that that's untapped, but women over 50 control a $19 trillion economy globally, <laughs> which is bigger wow. than any national economy. And why? Because they have share of wallet. They're making all the decision financial decisions for the family mm -hmm. right? and aging parents mm -hmm. and older children who are in uni like a university setting. Mm -hmm. And so you want to, you want to win the hearts and minds of this power consumer. I mean, some of the stats yeah. are remarkable. Like women make own 89% of the bank account and make 90% of the OTC over the counter drug decisions. Wow. So it's brands that understand that this is a power consumer are going to do well. And it's at a time in a woman's life, in my opinion, I'd love your thoughts on this, where the very heavy lifting of small children and the carpools and the trying to get ahead in our jobs we've we're kind of in the third chapter to quote Ariana Huffington of our lives where we can pay attention a little bit more to our needs we anti-aging our health and wellness has to be now at the forefront self-care has to be at the forefront so investing in our own health and probably at 50 years smack in the middle of perimenopause or menopause um so it's really prioritizing our own health decisions and investing in them. Yeah. And I think by the time you hit your fifties, you also understand how much women are relied on for the extended family, whether that's aging parents or siblings, maybe that aren't doing so well, or in some cases, even, you know, partners. Right. So, um, as they say, you have to put on your own oxygen mask before you can put it on other people. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yes. Yeah, women are very focused on their well-being and and also the generation of women hitting their 50s now are are much different than the boomer the boomer um generation that we saw before there's a little bit more openness um about issues like menopause and menstruation and certainly the generations after us the millennials and gen z are or even better than we are about that. I think you're right. I think we'll see a complete turnaround from our mom's generation, the medical support, education, resources through to our daughter's generation on how, how they'll tackle this. I'm quite excited to see how that plays out. Um, but for now, when there's still this stigma or element of shame, doctors going through med school, GPs get between one hour to eight hours of training. What can we do now as women to champion our own wellness, in your opinion? Well, I think what we're going to see and we're already seeing it is more of a consumerization of healthcare and things like biohacking. We already see it with people tracking their sleep and searching Dr. Google for solutions, yeah. um, looking for online telemedicine, for, you know, mm. at first instance, which sure beats going and meeting with three or four doctors to find the right one who's going to listen um, and maybe is open to the type of treatments that you want. So for example, we know that many doctors were scared off by hormone replacement therapy because of the woman's health study and so even today, even though that study has been debunked, you could find yourself in front of an OBGYN who just won't prescribe HRT. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see a couple of, we've already seen a couple of things change with COVID. 
and the shift to telemedicine, you've seen menopause specific telemedicine platforms emerge. Mm. You've even seen ones where there's no insurance reimbursement, right? You're subscribing yeah. to HRT and you're paying out of pocket. Mm -hmm. I call that the consumerization of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And then you see women researching and seeking out their own solutions like the Ember Wave and they want it now. They want it tomorrow. Yeah. They want it delivered via Amazon. Mm. Um, so I think we're going to see these these trends continue and see some, for example, beauty brands and CPG brands enter the space that's being left open by the medical community. Mm. I love that. There is definitely from when we started our company in 2013, there was almost nothing on Google search when you're really trying to hunt down great resources or evidence-based skincare supplements, support tools. Mm -hmm. And it's just night and day now, which is to your point, things are changing and consumers are taking matters into their own hands. You know, in Canada, we say we have a healthcare system and it's publicly funded with our tax dollars, but um, we don't, we have a sick care system, meaning and, and I'd love your take on the U.S. and how it's different. You have to be sick before you're in the system, whereby if there was only enough prevention, even 5, 10, 15 years before we get into our late 60s and 70s on what you described, take care of your parasympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight, like all of these um, tweaks in our body. If we got support and invested in ourselves earlier, the downstream impact would be so much different yeah. purely from a business point and the pressure on the healthcare system. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think that um, it goes against human nature a little bit to invest on the front end. Yeah. Um, I heard recently that in the Netherlands, dental care is free until you miss your appointment, your cleaning appointment. Oh, right. So that. then you get kicked to the curb and, and you have to pay for it yourself. And so those incentives have to be there. Mm -hmm. Where when it hits your wallet, <laughs> I think we're more apt to pay attention. That's right. Because that's that's in the moment now, right? I, it's just that investment. And I think to your point earlier about, you know, women in their 50s and how much money we control. Um, why aren't we deploying more of that energy and money to ourselves earlier, the payback yeah. would be significant. Well, nobody gets a roadmap for no. um, menopause. And, you know, you can buy a book in the United States when you get pregnant called What to Expect When You're Expecting. Yes. Very famous book, but nobody oh, writes yeah. the, the roadmap to menopause. And um, I think now it's getting better. There's a few more books out there. Mm -hmm. But there are def there is definitely a progression of symptoms starting in your 40s. You know, I, I, I'll talk to some of my colleagues in their 40s and they'll say, I've had anxiety when I've never had anxiety before. Mm -hmm. And usually that's that's kind of the first signal that you're you're on your way. Is that right? Is that what the so the re so as soon as you feel anxiety, that's a, a signal to watch out for more symptoms or what do you what do you recommend as let's build our own roadmap here so the first sign that something is going on is anxiety well what i'm what i'm talking about today is anecdotal evidence that okay. i have in my discussions okay. working for ember for now six years mm -hmm. um, but nobody has built that roadmap i'm sure it's highly individualized but there are some there are some general statements that you can make. What I've learned is it usually starts with anxiety and then night waking, mm. where you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep. And then it progresses into some of the, the symptoms we're more familiar with. Right. Well, I think that's good, just general direction, because how nice would it be that there's also a series um, dummies for whatever, um, or <laughs> menopause for dummies, or what to expect. It feels like there's a literary opportunity right here for us to collaborate on. But as soon as you, there's some sort of signal that something is going on, what is the first step, do you think, 
in your research that you would recommend women do what? What should we what should we do? My experience would say to see a physician who's specialized in menopausal health. Okay. And talk about those early symptoms and see if a physician can't help you identify whether you're you're taking those first steps into um, estrogen depletion. And then mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to see if you're put on estrogen replacement, whether those symptoms abate. Mm -hmm. Cause it's all measurable. That's the good thing. When you get your complete panel and you see your hormone levels <coughs> as a current state, then you go through some intervention and in three months get another set of blood work to measure hormones. Yeah, I, I, I don't know too much about the accuracy of hormone measurement because I know that for women it can fluctuate by the day, by the hour, by the week. Mm -hmm. But I think mm -hmm. that this is a new area that is being unpacked. I know that um, when I was at NAMS, I saw a consumer company that just released a hormone test, over-the-counter hormone test for menopause incredible like incredible the yeah i mean there's pregnancy tests there's COVID tests i that's really really great insight i'm so glad mm -hmm. that's coming i just found out you know from having another guest on this podcast and she was a specialist in hrt and it was so compelling um, and I've had rounds of HRT in the past, and it was really beneficial, and I don't know why now I stopped doing it. Um, but just talking to this specialist and her connecting cardiovascular health and heart disease to how critical it was to get your hormones balanced out, uh, you know, myself and our director of marketing, within two days we were in their system, and it's a telehealth system, so we could get our blood requisition and then we had a conversation and um, you know that was impactful right away to just reinforce that there are there are options out there for us to to feel better like we want to feel better that's, that's yeah, and part actually, of it you brought up cardiac health I was talking to I'm here in Boston near Mass General Hospital which is a famous research and teaching hospital and I was talking to an emergency room physician who told me that the majority of women he sees come in the doors with cardiac symptoms are women in menopause. And it's because they're having heart palpitations mm -hmm. that they believe is a car is cardiac arrest. Right. And That's scary. Apparently estrogen is critical for the elasticity of a lot of the veins, arteries, capillaries that blood is coursing through. And so as, as the estrogen is depleted, those become more rigid. And what I'm most interested in now is the new research on dementia and Alzheimer's and the link to estrogen. Oh, interesting. What are you hearing and seeing? Well, I, I think there are some early studies showing that there is a link between estrogen, a lack of estrogen and, and Alzheimer's, but don't quote me on that. I, I don't think the jury is out yet, but it is something that's being examined because we know that another symptom of menopause is brain fog and cognition, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. focus, cognition, recall. It's a very concerning symptom because I've spoken to many of our customers my network of women girlfriends and the prevalence of stopping mid-sentence because we just totally forgot we were about to say is like gosh and then the calls to our mothers is dementia running in our family that is a very scary conversation so it is worth um investigating and getting yeah. tested for i'm yeah. i'm very interested in that world and, and what's happening there in that research Wow, Elizabeth, as always, you are so dialed in and you know the, the, the emerging research, the emerging products. It gives us hope that there is finally the right investment of resources and education from 
academic institutions and innovators like you, you and your company to help um, the world, the women in menopause, our world, be a much better place. Well, we are also very grateful for what you're doing. And as I said at the beginning of the call, we have a bunch of folks in our company wearing a lot of your garments, very happy with them. Um, so glad. So we, we love your company and your products. Thank you so much for having me today. And where can, because I personally own an Ember Wave, and as I've said, and I've, as I've publicly said, my aha moment on how powerful it was, was, was actually working outside of the garden, and I had a hot flash at the same time as overheating in this hot weather, and I didn't have my device on, and I went running upstairs to put it on, and it was almost instant relief, and it was like the opposite of getting a warm hug, the perfect way to get a cool hug that just took me right off the edge and yep. it really is a spectacular device. So where can our listeners and viewers find this spectacular device? Well, if you're in North America or in the United States, you can purchase it on our website or at Amazon. And we're, if you're in Canada, you can buy it from our website and in about a month we'll be on Amazon Canada. Perfect. Well, we thank you for your insights. And as always, I just love our conversations and our collaborations as companies. And we'll keep doing so, so we can bring more awareness to the great work that you guys are doing. So thank you. Well, likewise, Laura. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Elizabeth.